Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson here, and I'm here to bring you our notes video for special right triangles. Um, the first special right triangle that we're taking a look at is the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So think about a right triangle. We always know that one of its angles is 45 degrees, or one of its angles is 90 degrees. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, I know that the other angles are also 45. Okay. So what that means is I know that this side, or I can call this side length x, which means if the angles are equal, the side lengths are equal as well. So the other side length is also x. Okay. Then if I'm trying to find the hypotenuse, using the Pythagorean theorem, I can plug that in. And I'd have x squared plus x squared equals c squared, or whatever my hypotenuse is going to be. Well, that means I have 2x squared equaling c squared, okay, and then when I take the square root of that, okay, I have an x squared here. The square root of x squared is x, so x is going to come outside, leaving me with the square root of 2 underneath, and that is my third side. So this is a special pattern that we can use in order to quickly find side length of a 45-45-90 triangle. I have x, x, and x root 2. Okay, so now using that pattern, let's take a look at number one. In number one, um, I know that the value, or I'm trying to find the value of x, which happens to be the hypotenuse. So in this case, I see that it's a right triangle. I see that I have a 45 degree angle, which means this is also 45 degrees. I also am told that this side length is four, which means that side length is also four. Now, knowing that my side lengths are x, x and x root 2, that means that I can quickly take this 4 and plug it in for my x there, for that third side length. So the third side length is going to be 4 square root 2, because I'm just taking the x and plugging it into x spot. Okay, so that's going to equal my value there. x is equal to 4 root 2. Now, one thing that I want to say about these patterns, these patterns are great to know, but if you want to use the Pythagorean theorem every single time and Sokotoa every single time, you can. It'll always work. These are just kind of shortcuts that we can use instead. So let's take a look at number two. And number two, I now know the hypotenuse, but I'm missing this piece. Okay, so if the hypotenuse is um, 5 root 2, and I know that these two side lengths are the same because they're both called x, that means I have a 45, 45 degree triangle, 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Um, so since I know that the hypotenuse is equal to x root 2, that means that 5 has to equal x, so x is equal to 5. Okay, now I want you to pause the video at this time and see if you can work on number 3 on your own. See if you can figure out number three. Let's take a look and um, talk about the other pattern, the 30, 60, 90 degree pattern. Now, in a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle, I know that this is my right angle. I have one angle that's 30 degrees, so that means this one has to be 60 degrees. Well, if I back two of these triangles up to each other, like I have here, because I'm looking at that one, I mirror image the same triangle and put it on the other side. That means that this angle, this angle up here, if I put those two together, is 60 degrees. Well, in a 60, 60, 60 triangle, all the side lengths are the same. So that means this side length has to be 2x and that side length has to be 2x. So using that to find just the right triangle, this bottom piece is pretty easy. Okay, this bottom piece is going to be half of 2x. Well, we know half of 2x is just going to be x. So I already know the hypotenuse is 2x. Now I found the bottom side to be x. And then I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side length. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I'd have um, x squared plus b squared, whatever my missing side length is, is equal to 2x squared. Okay, so then if I plug that in, um, I have x squared, sorry, let me put parentheses around that so I make sure I square both parts. I have x squared plus b squared is equal to 4x squared because I have to square both the 2 and the x. 
Well, solving for b, that's what I'm trying to do here is get b by itself. I'm going to subtract an x squared. So I have b squared is equal to 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared. And then if I take the square root, again, this x squared, the square root of that can come out front. So I have b is equal to x. I'm left with the square root of 3 underneath. So that's my missing side length, x root 3. So again, these are just patterns, x, 2x, and x root 3. These are patterns that we are going to look at together. Okay, so let's do an example. In number 4, I'm trying to find both x and y. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I know that because I have a right angle here, and I'm also told that's 60, so that has to be 30 degrees. So that means I know that this side is x, this side is 2x, and this side is x root 3. So if I use the things that I'm given, if I know that 2x is equal to 10, then I know that 1x is equal to 5, because I need to take that 10 and divide by 2. Now, if I know that x is equal to 5, that also gives me that, so I know that this is equal to 5 root 3. So in my two values that I'm trying to find, x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 5 square root 3. Now I want you to go ahead and pause the video at this time and see if you can figure out part B. See if you can do part B on your own. Now let's flip it over and just look at a couple more examples together. Um, we're going to look at find the exact value of the sine of 45. The exact value of the sine of 45 degrees. So now look at your special right triangle, that one right there, for the 45, 45, 90. Okay, I know that this is going to be 45 degrees. I know that that's going to be 45 degrees. So if I want the sine of 45, okay, the sine of 45 is going to be, using SOHCAHTOA, is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look at this 45 degree angle, the opposite is x, the hypotenuse is x root 2. So I'm looking at x divided by x root 2. Okay, well, we all know that x over x cancels out. So these are going to go away, and I'm left with 1 divided by the square root of 2. But the other thing that we all know is that when we simplify radicals, we're not allowed to leave a um, perfect square, or I'm sorry, a radical in the denominator. Since I can't leave that square root of 2 in the denominator, I'm going to square it, or in other words, multiply it by itself. But if I do that on the bottom, I'm going to do it on the top. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2 outside. And on the top, 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. So that's my exact value. When we say exact, we mean not a decimal. We are not finding a decimal here. Okay. Um, let's move on and look at number 7. We'll come back to number 6 tomorrow in class. So if I look at number 7, looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, find the exact value of the sine of 60. So now when I look at my um, 30, 60, 90 triangle, I know that x is across from the smallest angle. So here's my x. That means this angle is 30 degrees. And I know that 2x is across from the right angle, and x root 3 is across from 60. But that's how I always label my angles. x is across from the 30. x is the smallest side. It's also across from the smallest angle. So I'm looking for the sine of 60. I'm looking at this angle. Sine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is x. My hypotenuse is 2x. So in this case, sine of 60 is equal to the adjacent, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2x. Again, x over x cancels out. Since I can cancel those out, I'm left with 1 over 2. Can't reduce it anymore. No radicals to fix. The sine of 60 is 1 half. So that's going to conclude our video for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll finish up the rest of our notes in class tomorrow. Have a great night. Don't forget to go back and take your Schoology quiz. See you tomorrow.